Let's look at the effect of a tax on the market for computers. We start by looking at the market without the tax. Without a tax, the equilibrium price of computers is $1,000 each, and there are 100 million computers bought and sold each year. Now suppose the government imposes a $500 excise tax on computers. That's $500 tax per computer sold. To see the effect of the tax, we find the amount of $500 on the graph, and we insert it so that it touches both demand and supply. This gives us two prices, a consumer price of $12.50 and a producer price of $7.50. The consumer price is the price the consumer pays with the tax included. The producer price is the price the producer receives after handing the tax over to the government. The difference between these two prices is $500. That's the tax that goes to the government. Now the picture looks messy, but it is in equilibrium. And we can see that by looking at these two prices. When consumers pay a price of $1,250, including the tax, they're willing to buy 80 million computers per year. This is the quantity demanded. When the producers receive $750 per computer net of the tax, producers are willing to offer 80 million computers a year for sale. This is the quantity supplied. Equilibrium is the point at which quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Because quantity demanded and quantity supplied are both 80 million computers, we have equilibrium here. Now to see the effect of the tax on the market, let's look at the consumer and producer surplus that the market generates before the tax and after the tax. With no tax, the price of the computer is $1,000, and the consumer and producer surpluses are these areas. The market surplus, or the total benefit to society from the exchange in this market, is the sum of these two surpluses. Now, let's impose the tax. With the tax imposed, the consumer price rises to $1,250. So the consumer surplus is everything above $1,250 and below demand. The producer price falls to $750. So the producer surplus is everything below the price of $750 and above supply. The producer and consumer surplus show the benefits to the consumers and to the producers from exchanging in the market for computers. But in this scenario, the consumers and the producers aren't the only players. The government is also present. The government obtains a tax revenue of $500 per computer times the 80 million computers that are sold. This tax revenue is also a benefit that's generated for society from the market. So the total benefit to society from the exchange in the market for computers is the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus plus the government's tax revenue. And notice there's a section missing. We call this the deadweight loss. This is an amount of happiness for the consumer and profit for the producer the market could have generated but failed to generate because of the distortionary effect of the tax. That is, the tax caused consumers to act as if computers were more expensive than they really are, and so cut back on their consumption of computers. And it caused producers to act as if computers were less profitable than they really are, and so cut back on their production of computers. The result is there are fewer computers being bought and sold, and because there are fewer computers being bought and sold, the market for computers generates less benefit for society. In our example, the producers and the consumers shared the $500 tax burden evenly. Without the tax, consumers paid $1,000, producers received $1,000. With the $500 tax, consumers paid $1,250, producers received $750. So each of them paid $250 of the tax. Now suppose consumers regard computers as a necessity. This will be reflected in a steeper demand curve for computers. Notice what happens with the steeper demand curve. Without the tax, the equilibrium price of computers is $1,000. Consumers pay $1,000 per computer. Producers receive $1,000 per computer. Now we impose a $500 tax. The $500 tax drives the consumer price up to $1,400 and drives the producer price down to $900. So of the $500 tax, consumers are paying $400 while producers are only paying $100. And this makes sense if you think about it. If consumers regard computers as a necessity, then producers are more able to pass on the tax to the consumer.
Now suppose consumers regard computers as a luxury. As a luxury, the demand curve is flatter. Without the tax, the equilibrium price is $1,000. Consumers pay $1,000 per computer. Producers receive $1,000 per computer. Now impose the $500 tax. With the $500 tax, the consumer price rises to $1,100, while the producer price falls to $600. So consumers are paying $100 of the $500 tax. The producers are paying the other $400. The interesting conclusion here is that governments don't have the ability to decide who ultimately pays a tax. Who ultimately pays the tax is determined by the market forces. The more of a luxury the good is, the more of the tax the producers are going to have to pay in the form of lower profits. The more of a necessity the good is, the more of the tax producers can pass on to the consumer in the form of higher prices.